Hello there, geeks and gamers. I'm Mark the Cyborg, and I'd like to tell you about a game I've been playing which I think you might enjoy. You may have heard of this one. There are few games in existence more awesome than id Software's 2016 reboot of the Doom franchise. With the imminent release of Doom Eternal, I took the time to play through the game for a fourth time on a difficulty I've never had the stones to attempt previously. This game loses nothing on additional playthroughs. If anything, the time since my last run has given me some perspective on just how incredible this game is. And the challenge level on ultraviolence difficulty? The thing which surprised me the most this time around was how many people on the Geeks and Gamers staff, who were nice enough to hop on during my channel's monetization stream, had never seen this game in action before. This sparked my interest in making this video, so that in the month we have before Doom Eternal releases, I can hopefully explain why Doom 2016 is, much like Vanquish, a game of unbridled awesomeness. At the beginning of Doom, you find yourself chained up in a sarcophagus as some frail, zombie-like creatures are about to kill you. Because your character, the Doomslayer, is literally too angry to die, you burst out of the chains and proceed to kill the living hell out of every demon you see for the next 10 hours or so. That's it. That's the game. There is a story, there is lore, and some of it is honestly quite interesting, but unlike many other modern shooters, Doom keeps its focus squarely on the gameplay. Much like many of the retro shooters coming out of the indie scene which I love so much, like Project Warlock, Dusk, A Medieval, and Ion Fury. The gameplay in question is a fast and fluid mix of shooting, melee combat, and platforming. When it comes to the platforming elements, it's not exactly dying light, but there are a few light jumping puzzles. More importantly, the Doom Slayer's ability to double jump and mantle around the battlefield makes combat much more interesting than it has ever been previously in the series. And this is coming from a guy who flat out loves the original Doom games. Somehow, even with the ability to scale ledges and fly around in the air with double jumps, it still feels like Doom. It's an evolution of the classic gameplay, rather than a total reworking. This is due in large part to the speed at which the game plays. And to be honest, the speed could even stand to be a tad faster. The Doom Slayer definitely moves faster than the default speed of most shooter protagonists who have to sprint, and he makes Master Chief seem like a turtle in comparison, but it still feels a hair slower than what we're getting from the aforementioned indie games. Doom Eternal is adding a dash maneuver which may rectify this. It's a mechanic which feels awesome in the recent Shadow Warrior games, as well as indie titles like Elderborn and Get to the Orange Door, so it's nice to see it pop up in some more mainstream fare. The other major addition to the new Doom series over the originals is the melee combat. It's a unique take because the mechanic is not so much melee combat as it is melee executions called glory kills. Glory kills are essentially mini Mortal Kombat fatalities which are over in a split second but are densely packed with satisfying gory eye candy. Rip and tear brothers and sisters, rip and tear. Eye candy is not the only benefit to doing glory kills though. You become invincible during the animation so it gives you a bit of a moment to breathe and when you've finished killing, health power ups explode from the enemy. This creates what's essentially the opposite of Halo and Call of Duty's recovery system, where you're encouraged to back away from combat and find cover when you're injured. In Doom, the best way to heal is to dive headfirst into the fray and kill your little heart out. Shortly into the game you find a chainsaw which provides a new layer of strategy to the glory kills. Your chainsaw is regulated by a limited amount of fuel bars which are used in different quantities depending on how large or powerful the enemy you're fighting is. The bigger the enemy, the more fuel which will be used, but assuming your math checks out, the chainsaw provides one hit kills 100% of the time, with the added benefit of the enemy bursting out into not only health power ups, but ammo as well. So low on health? Move in, tear out a Mancubus's heart with your bare hands and feed it to him. Low on ammo? Find yourself a Hell Knight and slice through its shoulder with your chainsaw and witness as he erupts into a beautiful geyser of glowing shotgun shells and rockets. Good wholesome fun. When it comes right down to it, running, jumping, climbing, chainsawing, punching, ripping, and tearing all take a backseat to the S in FPS. At the end of the day, what else does a Doom Slayer need? Guns. Lots of guns. The weapons in Doom are all basically reimaginings of classic weapons from the Doom and Quake games. Most of them even include a couple modifications you can choose from an upgrade. You start with a pistol, which is next to useless, although you can squeeze a bit of extra damage out of it by charging your shots and aiming for the head. It performs more like the pistol from Quake 2 than anything from Doom, as it has unlimited ammo and laser shots. Next you find the shotgun, which is your workhorse for the first quarter or so of the game. 
One of the modifications lets you charge up a three shot rapid fire and the other gives you a super useful grenade launcher with splash damage. The heavy assault rifle handles similarly to the machine gun found in Doom 3, but its modifications give you a cluster of mini rockets or a scope making it one of the few weapons in the game which let you aim down sights. The plasma rifle looks a lot different than its Doom and Doom 2 counterpart, but functions as a great crowd control weapon with its stun grenade and repulse blast mods. The old faithful rocket launcher makes a return with a lock targeting mod and a remote detonator which lets you strategically utilize your splash damage. The chain gun returns, and the modifications for it don't really seem too different from one another to me. It's honestly one of the least fun weapons in the game, which is a shame because I was all about the chain gun in my recent playthrough of Brutal Doom 64. It's not exactly a useless weapon, but it's also not quite the game changer it really should be. The Gauss Cannon is essentially the railgun from Quake, and while this isn't the kind of game in which you'll want to be dealing with enemies at long ranges, due to all the perks that come along with close quarters combat, the heavy damage this weapon does can be devastating, even if the Siege mod makes you feel like a sitting duck before that life-saving shot charges up. That's pretty much it. Oh, okay, you caught me. There is one more standard weapon which might be my favorite weapon in any game ever. The short, powerful, and double-barreled Super Shotgun, baby. There are no mods for the Super Shotgun, but you can upgrade the reload speed at penetration to the pellets, and if you manage to get 30 single shot multi kills, you get to fire each barrel individually, but with double damage. Effectively giving you 4 shotgun shells worth of damage in the span of like a second. It's so awesome. It's honestly one of the most fun and effective first person shooter weapons in existence. On top of the standard weapons, there's also the BFG 9000, which now has its own dedicated ammo supply. This was a smart choice as it makes it feel like the special weapon of mass destruction which it is, and doesn't deter you from using your plasma rifle the way it did in the original games. They used to use the same ammo, so sorry, sometimes I forget that not everybody knows Doom like the back of their hand. You should though, I mean what do they teach you in school? Math? English? I speak English. Speak English good. You also have a selection of grenades which work on cooldown timers, but I honestly kept forgetting about them. They are pretty handy against the shield guys though. I hate those shield dudes. All of the aforementioned skills and tools combine to make what is easily the best AAA shooter gameplay of this past console generation. It's all tight, intense action that has your heart pounding from start to finish. The side dish to that gameplay main course, and probably the only thing which really sets it apart from the current wave of amazing indie shooter heavy hitters, is the stunning id tech visuals. I've played this game four times on three different platforms, and while the technical performance of the Nintendo Switch version is below what I'd consider the baseline for a modern first person shooter, it's head and tails above anything I've ever seen on a portable gaming system. If you have the option to play on a PS4, Xbox One, or especially a decent PC with a high refresh rate gaming monitor, you'll understand why it has been one of the leading graphics engine developers for the last 30 years. Combine those slick visuals with punchy sound effects and that ever so amazing Mick Gordon soundtrack and you've got a technical package which seems nearly impossible. And Doom Eternal looks to up the ante even further. So if you love first person shooters or are even mildly curious about them, Doom can be found on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and the Bethesda store for what I'm sure are now reasonable prices. And if you haven't played it, put it on the top of your list. For Gaming with Geeks, I'm Mark the Cyborg and you are incredibly smart and funny. There's also a multiplayer mode and a map editor, I never touched either of them. But the single player campaign in Doom is so much fun, I really never felt I needed to.